Hi, I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church, and this is Walking with Jesus, a devotional journey through books of the Bible, and we are currently in the book of Hebrews. Day 47 of our Hebrews Walk Together with Jesus, looking at Hebrews chapter 12, verses 12 to 17, and asking this question, why is holiness so vital? Listen now to God's word. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears." That's Hebrews chapter 12, verses 12 to 17 in the English Standard Version. My dad taught me how to drive when I was 16 years old. I also took a driver's education class in school, but my dad was my primary driving instructor. And, and sitting here 28 years later, I still remember some of the things he taught me. Look down the road ahead of you and not right at the front of the car. Allow for a three-second following distance between you and the car in front of you. Anticipate light changes and be ready to stop when you approach an intersection. Let your foot off the brake slowly and look both ways when the light turns green before you enter an intersection. And always check over your shoulder before changing lanes. It is possible to drive a car without following the rules, and, and sometimes I've been driving and I have forgotten to do what I know is right. And when I do that, I pay the price with consequences. Now, if I were to blatantly ignore all guidance about driving, where would I end up? In a ditch on the side of the road? In the hospital? Someplace worse? You see, as believers, we are running a race of faith in which we must persevere to the end. Hebrews has been instructing us in how to run well. Lay aside sin. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Focus on him in faith. Resist sin and temptation, even if it's painful. Accept hardship as discipline from your loving Heavenly Father. Now the writer of Hebrews shifts from our individual race to our obligation to help each other by strengthening those who are weak and striving for peace with one another. We are not running alone. We are part of a team, part of a unified body. We have our individual responsibilities, but we also have responsibilities to one another. In our individual responsibilities and in our responsibilities to serve one another, holiness is centrally important. We need holiness, for without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Here, the author of Hebrews is probably building on what Jesus said in the Beatitudes, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He, that's Matthew 5, 8. When we reach the end of our race, when we cross the finish line, we will see God. We will see Jesus face to face, and we will be miraculously changed into his likeness, according to 1 John 3, 2. Do you want that? Is that your earnest desire to, to reach the finish line and see Jesus? If so, then you need holiness. If so, then you need to take seriously everything we've been reading in Hebrews. But what if you don't? What if it's not important to you whether you cross the finish line and see Jesus or not? What if you just can't be bothered? Well, that would make you like Esau, who thought so little of his birthright that he sold it for a bowl of stew. If your attitude is so casual and so callous to the things of God, you may have come to a place where even if you want to change, you cannot. So pursue peace with one another and pursue holiness. Pursue them like your life depends on them, fixed on Jesus, because it does. 
For only those who truly love Jesus and strive after his ways show that they belong to him. They show by their hatred of sin, their commitment to Christ, their pursuit of holiness, that they are his and he is theirs. And as we will see next time, they can live in the confident assurance that they are citizens of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And they will stand with Christ at the end when all else has given way before him.